And we brought you Pumzile Ngobo's story. When a daughter Ayanda turned 21, Pumzile went to Afbob, the family's burial policy holder, to find out about the status of a daughter's policy since Afbob would no longer recognize her as a member. This is what she told us then. So when I came there, they said Ayanda died in 2007 and I was very shocked because Ayanda was alive. And I asked them how come. They said according to their record, Ayanda was dead. When the SABC approached Afbob, it indicated that these documents, which included Pumzile's ID and Ayanda's birth and death certificates it received. Afbob indicated some were fraudulent and after investigations found that the death certificate was actually legitimate. Somebody cashed in on the policy and walked away with 8,000 rand, and it was not Pumzile Ngobo. Afbob contends that in 2007, not all of the Home Affairs branches issued death certificates with stamps and that it relied on the user ID number on the death certificates. In 2007, when this claim was submitted, there seems to have been no hard and fast rules about it being stamped. Afbob was defrauded. Okay, we were the victims of the crime. Home Affairs has since confirmed it was not compulsory then for death certificates to carry a stamp. The South African Crime Insurance Bureau has been investigating fraud within the short-term insurance sector for over four years. As far as long-term insurance goes, the Bureau is investigating cases which amount to millions of rand. We are already busy with three, three huge claims within medical as well as uh, huge cases in medical as well as, as um, um, funeral uh, claims. Uh, one, of these, one of these groups actually uh, lodged 1,905 false claims to, to, to one of our companies only. And uh, we, we're sure that we will soon in the new year, we will take them to court. And sadly, Fanzel says the cost of fraud is one of the drivers of increasing premiums. Chris Alda Lewis, SABC News, Johannesburg.